I've enclosed a list of our buses. We have 15 buses currently. I've enclosed a um, bus maintenance supervisor job description from another school district. That particular school district does have its own maintenance um, and repair people. And on the next page, you'll see the employees that they have and the salaries that they are paid. I also included Milton South, an email from Milton's town administrator. Uh, town of Milton has a mechanic of their own for town that does not include the school buses. Uh, the next one is the hourly rate for a heavy equipment mechanic for the state of New Hampshire. Then I did find one for another town in Massachusetts and also another company, private company. And I highlighted all the pay rates for those individual employees. And the last page, what I did was I took an average, I took a salary on the high side of all of those. That's the highest amount that I found. And I averaged it at $50,000. I checked with Teresa and got the um, retirement rate. And that's next year's rate, not this year's. So that does include the increase. Um, I figured the highest health plan being the family plan that you offer and dental to come up with a total cost of what a possible employee may cost um, for this position. So basically we're here tonight to see if you want to continue um, for us to investigate this avenue or if you really don't have any interest in it, just to let us know, and then we can move on to our plan B. Do you know if the, the, those are full-time employees, the head and the assistant, on the comparison? I mean, Wilfra, they're full-time. Two full full-times and a part-time. And as mentioned last week, Rusty's in the back of the audience here. And Rusty used to handle all the diesel work at the uh, mechanic work at the highway department since retired. And uh, the, the plan as part of this was to hire somebody to kind of fill Rusty's shoes down there where that individual would also be expected to pick up a plow route as well as do the mechanic work. Um, that's part of this whole process. I guess I'd like to know, has anybody thought of what it would cost for the equipment that's going to involve to do this? Yes, we have. Uh, most, I, most of the, a diesel mechanic will bring their own tools with them. But there are specialty tools that um, the town would need to supply. And I believe uh, Chief, Chief Mikeel has looked that. into what he felt would be necessary to start with. Oh, and Wolfboro does not have a lift. They do not need a lift. They use air jacks, is what she told me. One of the reasons why we were looking into a lift, as Chief Biker will show in a minute, was because if they wanted to do work on the police cruises, as far as oil changes, yeah. tire changes, simple maintenance like that, which we thought might save the town, you know, some saving. We also talked to Fred about looking at a, a configuration in the building where would house buses, to be worked on. And Ms. Todd as well. Thank you, Todd. Uh, DOT rate was $16 to $19 an hour, roughly. The other comparison was. 23 to 15, 15 to 23. 15 was the assistant, 23 was the full time for the, the head mechanic. I think you'd find somebody for 23, but I don't know if you wouldn't find anybody for the 16. Mm -hmm. That would be qualified, I would think. But when I did my estimate, I went high. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure worst case scenario with the family plan. And you said Melton's just working on their own stuff, not the schools? Melton's just doing the highway equipment, I believe. 
Wolf Burrows, totally, that's just for buses. For Wolf School only. Yeah. Are the buses, I know like when I heard my own truck, it's all computerized. It's computers, you take it to Crowds, he's got a $50,000 piece of machinery down there that analyzes it. Are the buses in that same state where they get analyzed before they, so, so that particular part would cost some money, I would think, other than just these. These seem like just tire changing and, and simple maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, we went through our, our bill, and um, mostly what we're looking at is tire changes, oil changes, um, batteries, a lot of electrical. Um, so would you think $75,000 that, that your, the cost for them particular items, so say at uh, the, um, the dealership or wherever you do, we must bring what the previous program is. Um, well, the cars go to Sunday. Would that? It cost us $75,000 last year. Hmm. And one of the ideas behind this was to start it off slow, you know, just to, to do basic maintenance of the vehicles. And if it, it works out well, to start building on it. Well, they're new leased vehicles, so you shouldn't be having major repairs. It should just be preventive maintenance items. They should be under warranty a lot, too, correct? Half of, half of that 75000 approximately half of the 75000 is labor. Yeah, it's going to happen. Who takes the responsibility if, if um, I mean, the process seemed to be a very, in my world, that I would think that the, uh, with kids on that bus, it would be an awful high liability if you don't have a real qualified. And I'm, I'm saying because if you look in between 16 and 22 dollars an hour, you've, you've got a good average man. Um, but it seems like an awful kids on a bus, and I don't know if I I, get, uh, I want us to have that responsibility. I'm all I, I, don't, I won't say I'm not for this because I I, I want to hire. I like to hire a mechanic down because we need somebody to fill rusty spot down there. And, uh, but if, who takes care of that? I mean, has that ever thought about the, the heavy liability behind that? Well, you already got kids on, on buses to begin with. And that would <coughs> fall on the town. Well, I mean, it falls well, on the school. Well, we want to talk to the you know the insurance company and make sure that you know might need to add a little, some liability to the policy, but we're already insured for having kids on the buses to begin with. But I'm saying, thinking that you know, if it would, it would be, we'd be taking a lot more responsibility as for get the dealership taking that, but the, mm -hmm. um, by all means, I would, I would it's say. It's a concern. It's definitely yeah. a good question. Uh, maybe Teresa will check with your insurance company. It would be an issue if there was an accident and the bus didn't meet safety standards. Yeah. Well, it would be the only time when we were driving unsafe vehicles. And we have to go through that. We have to be certified anyway. Right. Um, I think Chuck E is certified then for that inspection stuff. Is that something uh, you've done, Chuck? I haven't done any buses and I really don't care to do the bus. <laughs> I'm doing the truck. But we have done the buses in the past with right. roughly. If it come down to it, I would. I've got, it seems like they're still doing the buses over the freezer when they go over there. Just for that reason. Maybe, maybe as for just the inspections, I mean, it probably would be maybe best to send them to a, the big thing for that overall, but for like the general maintenance and all. And I don't think the DOT is going to do their inspections on the buses anymore. They used to do it once a year, every year on those buses, right? They're, doing a they're not going to do it anymore. They're doing a pilot program right now um, where they're going, they're no longer going to do the annual inspection, but they're going to do spot inspections. And your each garage, any garage or inspection station that does buses will have to have an added certification for that. Can you get any consensus of the public? What anybody else is. This is basically just been discussed at this point at, at our transportation committee level and the joint committee level with the town officials, town departments. And I know if I can speak for the chief for just a moment, I mean one of the things that he was expressed his thought on was 
vehicles being maintained right now, but not maintained as much as he'd like. Like, for instance, you might change the transmission fluid, but you don't necessarily change the filter. Or if we had somebody doing it on our own, we could get both of them, which would make the cars get a little bit more wear and tear. Am I too far off base on that, Chief? No, you're pretty close. And what the, what the issue is is that, you know, we've, we've been doing a pretty good job of keeping costs down, but the fact is is that we can't get nearly what we need done for, for maintenance done for the cars because the bills, you know, the bills are high now. Everything's cost more. So the things, the regular maintenance things like oil changing, changing tires, changing transmission fluid, you know, screwing in plugs and things like that, not your high tech stuff is most of our money. If we can cut that, if we can cut that in half, I won't be, I wouldn't be reducing my budget, but I'll get a lot more done to the cars. Because we've stopped doing things like changing transmission fluid. We just don't do it. We've stopped doing things like putting spark plugs in. Because we kind of, that's, we don't have that much money anymore. I know, but, you know, on that account, you know, cars are a lot different than they used to be. They seem to run, you know, the transmission, you don't need to change that every time you turn around. It's, I don't believe in changing oil every 3,000 miles because it's, uh, to me, that you should get five to 8,000 out of them, and I think you do. But remember, these cars are these run 24-7. These cars run all the time. Yes, you, and and maybe your car. Brakes. Yeah, I didn't say that. Brakes and stuff fall so apart. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not going either way on this. I'm just saying if on our end, if it was just a question of providing oil and parts, of course we'll get more done. Mm -hmm. The rest of the issue, that's up to you guys. But I'm just saying the maintenance end of it is, is getting tighter, you know, as you know. So. Mm -hmm. And oil change on one of our buses, on large buses, depending on how many quarts of oil it takes, because they all take a different number of quarts mm -hmm. of oil is anywhere between three and four hundred dollars to change the oil on the bus. And we're running those buses to Rochester every day. We're picking up, I think Tim told us the special ed buses are running about 200 miles a day and the other buses are running about 150. How many days in the school year? How many? 36,000. Oh, I believe they make that by all means. They're also used for like parks and rec. Yeah, um, special trips. Special trips. budgeting their own, their own budget in that cycle. 
the individual would just be using different accounts when he picks up products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to, to try to exactly. Sell the school would pay for their parts. We the town would pay for theirs, and but we you know the salary would be paid out of the town, and the school would give us twenty percent or whatever we agreed upon towards that. So it's roughly about fifteen thousand to a seventy-five thousand dollar position. Mm -hmm. Correct. John, you had your hand up. Uh, how many? Miles, you put on those buses before you change the oil. I'm not sure what they're doing. I wouldn't want to say. I'm not positive. Well, um, you know, I'm guessing it's probably around 5,000 miles. Maybe. Those buses, the diesel, they should go 10,000 miles for the oil change. Well, they should do at least eight if they're using synthetic oil, which is what I do on my own diesel. If you run good oil, you go 10,000 miles out. We can ask Tim a question. Some of them are 46 quarts. Yeah. But I also don't. I'm, I like, I don't you know, like what, what I drive for two hours one morning and two hours in the afternoon. So they're they're driven, you said 200 miles. And, uh, 37,000 a year. Yeah, and I do that too. Mm -hmm. so I do think you sh we should get a lot more than just changing it all the time. But, uh, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to add longevity to the machinery by taking maintenance. Right. Well, the idea behind this whole proposition was to, as mentioned, to kind of fill Rusty's position down there, as well as even though the money is the tax, it's from the taxpayers, mm -hmm. but if the schools help and participate in paying somebody down there at the highway department, it's a little bit of a savings in that respect, if we're, if we're combining resources. And the idea is to kind of save money for the town and still provide good service. Yeah, and I'd like to, if we hire somebody, that would be great to have them be all around yep. involved in the whole road crew and everything else. That would be the idea. But rather than want to take the response. You see, buses with children, children become a different issue. And uh, like so Chuck you just said, he, he's not comfortable with it only because I'm sure it's not because of the bus, it's because of what's on that bus that makes that difference. And uh, I'm with him there on that because that scares me just to think of it. But, well, I'm sure there's some training and certificate issues as well. I mean, I, I think you need a different certificate to inspect the bus than you would to inspect the highway department. Right, right now you don't. You don't, really? You don't right now. They're doing Are they coming to that? Oh, okay. that. The D DOT inspects the buses once a year all the time, and then we had to inspect them twice a year along with their inspection. Now, as far as I know, they're not going to inspect them anymore. But they're going to do it just like a truck. They're going to pull them over on the side of the road or come to the garage and say, okay, we're going to inspect this bus. If there's something wrong with it, they're going to put it off the road. I think it's expensive. Yep. <coughs> but that's, that's, that's one reason right there that we would have more hold on the whole situation because we would be more vigilant of what's going on with the buses, John. You know, um, by, by being part of in-house. I mean, I, I like the in-house thing as in we need workers down there. To, we got winter coming and, and whoever it is is going to have a CDL license to fill in the spot just like Rusty did. You know? um, is a uh, selectman actively uh, going out and interviewing for applications for maintenance person yet? Uh, so this is basically in the talking stage now. So is that something that you're going to do? We're going to have to. This is what we're. As far as this position is what we're trying to decide this evening. Okay. Okay. <coughs> In the uh, wage study, sixteen seventy-two to twenty-two sixty-one hourly rate on that. I think the 16, you're not going to get to qualify, but I know, that, you know on a personal level, I've discussed this outside the box here, and uh, I do know qualified people that are in, that could fill this position, but they definitely would not come for the 16. They may be in the 20 to 25 range there. Um, so that's where I would like to base the value of it at, between those numbers. Because 
guess some of that range has to do with whether or not they're providing their own equipment as well. I mean, you, you, you pay for what they bring in their own equipment, you've got to pay for that. What are they going to bring? They're going to bring the oh, toolbox. Oh, diesel mechanics. They're going to bring a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they 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 There's a lot more to it than a, than a Matt Cook toolbox. Just a toolbox is expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five, five grand for a snap on yeah. toolbox. Yeah. The governor went for it was 23 for their head mechanic and 15 for their uh, assistant. We're not looking for an assistant, right? Because we got qualified they, guys. I'm assuming the assistant is probably the oil change tire, change and light bulb guy. But what would be wrong with the, the boys that are in there? I mean, they're qualified to change the oil, unless you hope so. Well, the other thing we have to take into respect is that they do have, they would have other duties like keeping taking care of the roads and the infrastructure of the town. So, you know, you can't dedicate everybody to changing oil and stuff. That's going to have to be Okay, so that's where we go back to, That's where we go back to, that we are short-handed now. Exactly. exactly. So we need to make the decision on which You know we're short-handed, just how to repair, fix that situation. And the 23 uh, Kevin Wentworth was there six years, and the $15 an hour assistant's been there 19 years. Uh, Melton was $21 and he's been there 10 years. DO2 rates were 16 to 19. That's just how the hour they started. And a lot of these insurance packages and stuff. So like do, that. You, do you yeah. have a mechanic that's in yours or do you all just jump into it? No, we have, we're, we're able to do some stuff. I know we have breakdowns and stuff, but we have maintenance or agnostic that can do that. Oh, so. having a separate mechanic what? every There's a separate mecha a satellite garage. Um, there's uh, like five mechanics. What are the favorite? I don't know. Is that the one up on the 25? Right, just just the the 25 yeah. Yeah. On the left up on the hill? Um, just as you sat in 25, like you're heading toward Effingham. Uh, oh, okay. That, oh, so that's it, just as you start, if you go off 16 down the ramp, you just start. Right. Want to go east of 25 and turn right into the driveway. Okay, I was thinking of one up and maybe south. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I've got a pencil. Yeah, and you're great with statements. Mike supplied your own tools. Mike got supplied with your own tools. Yes, they have to. They have to supply They have their own boxes. I'm for hiring help, but I'm. Did, uh, did Peter fill you in on, as far as just my concerns when you guys talk? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, my concerns, and I didn't, meet, didn't make one of the meetings, I sent him a letter. Um, I'm not against it. I'm not anxious to jump on board or up hand. I mean, I've got probably the second largest fleet in town. And um, my only concern is, is there's other stuff that goes on that the town doesn't realize that uh, I deal mostly with prowls and I think they treated us very well and the stuff that the town don't see um, such as when the ambulance breaks down at 2 o'clock in the morning um, he'll come out pick it up and haul it back to the building the town doesn't see a bill on hauling that in um, we had a structure fire last winter up in uh, up on Bella Lake and um, one of our neighboring towns, because it was such a mild winter, their truck actually sunk right in the middle of the uh, camp room. And he came up at 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, pulled him out of the mud. And again, no charge to the town of Wakefield and no charge to the neighboring town. There's just other stuff that goes on, and I'm not, like I said, against any of this. I'm just, as far as my portion of it, a little Lear to jump on because there's other stuff that goes on that the townspeople don't see yeah. that uh, that is done for the town by these people. I didn't give it a thought. And I just, if we go, I can just see if we do a change, if, if we say, okay, starting in March, air yeah, all your maintenance stuff, you have to get on the town garage and done. Well, that other stuff that, uh, that the town of Wakefield gets out of that. Um, I, I don't believe that's going to be happening anymore. And I'm not saying that we're playing one against the other. I'm just saying this is stuff that an individual does 
because he lives in the town. And I just, the stuff that goes on that a lot of people don't see that I just don't want to um, see some change in it because when, when this stuff happens, we're in the middle of an emergency usually and um, we need to take care of it. So that's, that's just my concern. And that's why we thought about just maybe starting it out with maybe just the highway department and the school department. And then maybe other departments can see how it's working and if they wanted to join, they could. That was taken into consideration. Yeah. It wasn't mentioned, Todd. I mean, I don't know if we talk about it off hand or whatever, but um, it's valid concerns. And, um, but that's, again, like Judy said, why we were starting off small and working our way into, you know, comfortableness. Mm -hmm. And on the bigger stuff, we wouldn't want to try and do down there. You know, obviously, like with your pumps and everything else on the trucks, that's something that they wouldn't do down there. That's no, specialty sure. stuff. Uh, they got to be certified. Yeah. And so there, there's certain, there was limitations out there. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I think if you had a diesel mechanic, couldn't they also service your generators? In town? Yeah. Don't you have a service contract on those now? I think no matter what we do, we need a mechanic down at the garage. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not against getting back to where we belong in our town crew. Um, by all means. I, not that I don't think they got the, all of them down there can do things. I just think we're lacking help down there mm -hmm. because um, whether it's maintenance, whether it's if plowing snow is my big concern right now. I, I think we're short-handed. Ruth is going to be here very soon. It's coming soon. Somebody's going to be fielding some phone calls if they don't get some help done everywhere. Okay. So, I, I, you know, I, I think this is all valid and we need some more research and I think you're doing, personally, I think you're doing great already with the research of it. But, um, um, Peter well, asked me about the computerized um, inspection. Um, to check into whether or not we need to have any computer hookups for the inspection team. Right, and I did get the name of an officer, Kelvin, who's in charge of that. But he's not until Friday, so I couldn't get that answer for you. Well, I've talked to uh, John down here at one time not too long ago about those machinery. I mentioned it, and it wasn't about this at all. It was just our conversation. And those machineries cost a lot of money. Yeah, but you do your own town inspections on your trucks now and you don't have that machinery. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. And I'm wondering I'm not if it sure. has something to do with diesel maybe. Does diesel not require maybe um chuck with any answer? Yeah, maybe the answer better than the weight limit. Well with that weight limit you don't need that stuff. You don't need to hook it up to the computer, yeah. which like my pickup, I don't need to hook it up to the munitions. I don't know if we do it. So like we talked about with the buses, I mean, you could do a certain amount of maintenance and then send it out for yeah. inspection. Yeah. You know, it's... Still give everybody the piece of it. Everybody gets a piece of the pie, but you're keeping it. I, I think we're agreed that we need, well, I know we're agreed that we need somebody down there. Um, whether or not you want to share that service with the school is what the issue is this evening on this platform. Will that, that work under warranties? What's that? Um, will that work? Cover under warranties? A uh, change in your oil yourself? Is that going to void your warranties? Uh, we have to check with them. Sure, if you have a certified yeah, diesel mechanic, it would be covered. engine, and it's under warranty, you have to use Caterpillar pipe. Mm -hmm. If something goes wrong with it, and they see something wrong that's not a Caterpillar pipe, the warranty is gone. You have to use the parts, Chuck, but do you have to use a certified um, mechanic from that company? I don't think so. Long as you, you must have to keep the record. Long as you use their pipes and filters and they see that if something happens, you're right. I would imagine if you had a certified diesel mechanic doing the work, as long as you're following in their guidelines, it would probably... Engine work, if it's under warranty, I think it's got to go back to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would think yeah. that if we had a vehicle that was still under warranty, you would send it back. Would be you would send it back. Why would you mess with that? Yeah. You wouldn't mess with it if it's no. under warranty. So you're not going to change the oil in a... And something that's a warranty? Yeah, well, no, 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 so no. normal maintenance, but if there was a, a warranty problem, it's something broke, it was a yeah. warranty yeah. problem, you've got to send it back. Yes. Warranty. I would think we'd send and that's it when they start saying who did the repairs, was the paperwork, and 
that's just a matter of if you've got a good diesel mechanic down there, you should be doing the paperwork and oh, yeah. keeping the records. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the situation. Oh. Yeah, just a question. Notwithstanding the kind of staffing that you have at the uh, town barn now, but have, uh, have you folks talked with that crew down there as to whether or not they can take over those types of light maintenance issues? Changing oil, changing light bulbs, changing those types of things, standard uh, things, because probably you already have people in place that can do that. Obviously, they can't do that, drive a truck, Break the side of the roads exactly. and trip trees and dig ditches and replace the uh, catch basin. So, notwithstanding that, I, it sounds like the type of maintenance you folks are talking about, you don't need a certified uh, $35 an hour mechanic. You need someone that understands how to change oil. And I think you probably already have that in place. And so not only that, but I've also heard uh, several uh, discussions, and I don't know where they are because, quite frankly, I don't follow that closely that uh, there's been a fair amount of discussion as to whether or not the school's going to continue to lease their buses or if they're going to put that out and have somebody uh, uh, take over that contract. I don't know if that's Oh, I can been, answer that. If, if, okay, if that's been put to bed, that's, that's fine. That's been put to bed. We um, got an estimate from first student. Right now our bus expenses are about between five and $550,000. The first student estimate was, I believe, around $700,000. It doesn't surprise me. So that, and, that and, issue's gone. And I could answer the and first and question. And our, road and agent, and uh, the road agent is a part of this a vehicle maintenance committee. Mm -hmm. So any concerns about that, whether or not it can be done in-house, are being talked about, Paul. Well. Okay. And, and I guess the other issue is, is with respect to the fleet that we do have down there, we've been talking about, I know there's been talking about some privatization of the, uh, of the uh, road crew. Uh, not purchasing trucks, not purchasing new equipment. And uh, if we're in that position, uh, does it make sense that we go out and get a mechanic? We're not going to have equipment. Seems like there's some other decisions that need to be made before you hire a, a mechanic. Yeah, so thank you. Any more questions on uh, the first item on the agenda? Well, I'd say we table the answer, move to the second part of the agenda, or the next item on the agenda, which is, could be cross-related to it, and don't forget to revisit this. Yep. Okay. All right, I'd like to express a concern, though. I think we need to revisit this this evening, oh, yeah. because we're running short on time. Yeah. Yep. All right, we'll go from vehicle maintenance committee to uh, the highway department. You're comfortable there or up here? Yes. All right. As you say, me on. Real cool, man. Right. As we had uh, talked about this for some of the people that may not have been in prior conversations, uh, we've gone from a five-man crew, two have retired, down to a three-man crew down there. And we looked at uh, possibly doing some privatization out there, as a lot of places are doing now. Uh, my theories with it was you take a salaried employee or you know an individual at forty thousand a year, and then you add your insurance, your FICA, Social Security, health, uniforms, retirement. Uh, you're going to double that. Uh, now you buy him a truck, some fuel. Uh, you're up to hundred thousand dollars a person per year. So it just seemed like to me we we're looking for two individuals down there possibly. So we're talking. 200000 a year, and it seemed to me we could get a lot done for that amount of money. Uh, and I said right from the very beginning, if the department head didn't support this, it wasn't going anywhere. And I believe he stated he preferred employees uh, versus uh, subbing it out. So uh, we started talking in June. We're uh, less than a month away from snow, possibly. Yeah, or just a couple of months. Months. Yeah. So where does he stand now? I, I still think we should should have the help. I mean, to be able to do everything we should do year round, not uh, just for following snow. Yep. I mean, we're just, you know, we're just doing a little here, a little there, and taking, you know, two or three months to do a job that probably take a month, you know, with a full crew of men. So, and we can't spread out and do a velvet and, you know, trim brush or, you know, do this or do that with just three people. Cause Sure. You just can't do it. You 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 can't do
we got the other day we worked, we had four pieces of equipment with three men. <laughs> and one guy's jumping out of director traffic while the Grady's filling shoulders. You know, it's just it's not functional right now to be fair with the taxpayer, you know, really. I mean they, he's getting work done but not what he should be getting done. Should we get any, if we get anything back yeah, I'd like to just go over like ten figures such as I, I understand that's where they have cost, but have we got anything back that on something that I want that would cost? Well it depends depends what you'd sub out. I mean, uh, I would look at it as if you were to put it out for bid, um, say you wanted um, so many miles of tree trimmer. You'd have a company come in, a private company, tree trim it right out versus but how many still, employees. But, but what I'm saying is it, it would still cost probably basically the same. They may get it done in, in a, maybe a short period of time. I'm saying this is what job creation is, and we need to help the citizens of this town. And I, I think that uh, creating a couple of jobs might create some tax money that people can actually pay. And, you know, so are you going to be prejudiced when you're hiring and restrict us to only Wakefield residents? No, but well, you I would prefer it. it. You would, uh, <laughs> I think we'd restrict it to somebody 20, 25 minutes away. I'd, you know. I'd like the idea of helping our own community. If, if, if there was not enough applicants or unqualified applicants, then yeah, you've got to branch out because you don't have that. But, uh, no, I'm just saying, what I was just saying was there's no guarantee on, right. you know. And the government shouldn't be the biggest job creator out there either. Individually, I mean, contractor-wise, you don't have an extra couple of guys to fill in. You pick up the phone and call your subcontractors. Because the last thing you need is just coordinating extra people continuously versus as you need them. Correct. I would want somebody qualified, but that would be, you know, that would be the application yep. process. Yep. And going from that, I mean, I'm on a personal level as my own, I'm, I'm for putting a department the, back together. Let's make that a motion and put that into a motion. I'll put it into a motion that we get back to. I like the idea that we need two, is that correct, Fred? You should have two women, right? I have the motion to put that two to hire two, you know, at least get the applications being started. Is that full time or part time? I'm assuming we should go for full time. Two full time employees working with the uh, wage schedule. That's fine, because that's what we've been basing mm -hmm. everything on as a wage study. Yep, and 16 to 20. Yep. 21. A second. I'll set the job. All right. Any more discussion? <laughs> Any uh, discussion I would have is going back to what we talked about the type of bringing in over higher. Bringing the school back in, the mechanics, exactly. the cost, you know, possibly be working with the school. What are the levels of these people that we're looking at? Mm -hmm. Motion's made, seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor? All right. Okay. Opposed? One. One other thing, when you put that out for people out for advertisement, help on its own, the um, I'd make sure you put at least you want a mechanic that's fine dandy, but you need a you need an operator, not a truck driver. A equipment operator. Right. I think that we need to have a, a good standard level just to help these guys because they I mean No, I mean but you get an you get an, you get a truck equipment. He can drive a truck. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you've got to have somebody down there that can run equipment. They're shorthanded right there. I think, I, well, for my behalf, I'd like to re rely upon the road agent's advice as to that end of it as well. I mean, I think that's fair. If the road agent's going to be directing people, he should be directing the appropriate people. We definitely need something to equip offered. I mean, it's not just a truck driving position. Yeah. You're not just going to be driving a truck. Correct. That was the job description as a heavy equipment operator and a chief maintenance engineer. But I also don't want, I don't want somebody that's, that just thinks that that's what they're, they're, they're out there to play on Tonkis. I want somebody that's willing to jump in the hole and participate with the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I know. I know. I'm in the one here to take the shovel just like the rest of them. That's an employee. Be careful with them. Uh, so that takes care of 
Items A and B. Any uh, public comment on A and B? All right. <coughs> Moving on to C. Cemetery trustees, thank you for coming.
uh, respect to take care of the cemeteries, and it's, a, it's part of your commitment. Oh, I'm all for it. I'm just kind of curious why the I'd like to see a small Well, that's too. talking to the road crew. Just, <laughs> the just yeah. 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 Sure. Let me just say one more thing about Greg. Uh, if, if he put in uh, a bill for every committee he does, oh, we would be paying him a lot more than $31,000. Yeah. Right. He yeah. does a lot of It's come a long way for, right. for free. You know, not to mention GPSing all the sites and well, everything. Great, he's done a lot of that. We've done a lot of that ourselves. Yep. No, that's uh, great. Uh, we're going to be doing come up with the fertilizing Saturday. Uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy down to the new cemetery. We're going to put the uh, 12 ton line down there. What's being there for you? That's great, but what about the Level Lake Cemetery? I mean, that's in dire need. Well, it's a lot better than it used to be. A lot better than it was last year. But it's, it's a, in some parts, it's a glorified ant hill. I mean, some spots are just the ants are just, it's dust. I mean, I've heard people complaining that it's literally, and I went down and actually spread grass seed on one area for somebody because it was just dust. The ants were yeah. so in, in no, the ants. You, you, you got to remember one thing about Lake Cemetery. Those people own that plot. Yep. They, it's their responsibility to make sure. But there was no perpetual plot. care that goes with that? No, perpetual care is just on the grass and take care of the needs. Not for putting down the grass seeds and. and uh, Not maintaining the grass. Right. Just mowing. Right. Just mowing and trimming, picking, picking, up, picking up the brush in, in the spring and in the fall and uh, trash or whatever. Trash. But, as far as, as far as maintaining the individuals' uh, lots themselves, that's up to the individual. Uh, Is that clear? That, that's when the they buy it. Yeah, when they buy it. I mean, some of the some of the people are no longer here anymore that to maintain their lots. So, I mean, our perpetual care. We we we, we know the whole cemetery. We fill in uh, Fred fills in uh, lots that have been sunken, sunken graves. He fills those in, and he he does grass uh, seed yeah. and loam and stuff. And I hope the common or an ant hill is misunderstood, but that's what it really, yeah, it's just, had, it's very common. Yes, I, well, well, this is late summer, know. late summer. I don't think. But it's sensitive, you're right on the water too, as far as you know. Oh, I, I understand that, no, but it's, it's, you know, it's, you know, there's some, there's some areas out there that's just, just dust. I just wanted to report to you too. Yesterday, we found a new cemetery in Lakeview. It's up on Prairie Hill. It's got two women in it. It's in, in the early 1800s. Uh, it was found by a hunter, notified me. It's, a, it's, a, it's called the Abbott Cemetery. There's two, ab two abbots, a mother and a daughter. Because I had a piece of property okay. there where your right. father didn't know where there was a the cemetery. That, it's a burial ground. It's got two headstones, and that's why I think Adams was uh, the name on one of them. I don't know where that is. Right at the intersection of the Campbell Road and Prairie no, we have a pump yeah, that's, a, that's a camp. That's called Camp Now. It's not right, camp. right. It's, I don't know who's buried there yet. It's called Camp Now on our map, and we're gonna we're gonna go up there. It's about a thirty by thirty foot plot, and there's two headstones and a bunch of pointed rocks and some sunken areas. Well, that's, that's what we find out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good find. Can you show us exactly where it is? All right, I'll take a look at so, the uh, yeah. the you know, line thing. I don't know what that was on. Is that what you're applying? I mean, it's just lately we've been having the, um, these late, these, uh, water spout and all this stuff. We've been talking about all the, uh, Oh, this is a regular line. Going into the lake. Power, and it's white water line. But they're not, they're not doing it like the lake. He's talking about the one in the middle. By, um, we, uh, we're going to do it by the We decided to do Stonehenge this year. Uh, we did we did a level lake last year through line. Uh, Fred did it by hand. You know this year Stonehenge we've got a machine. Somebody that's bringing in a Fred, just a simple to get to Peter's point with the the same conditions at level lake. We talked in meetings about uh, the town uh, at that point was looking to uh, sell compost from the dump or have it removed and 
good ask to have some of that brought up to level late so uh, we could organically basically mulch that into the cemetery to help improve the grounds and uh, that really hasn't gone anywhere uh, but I think that's a free it's a free fertilizing you know like I told Phil I was happy to every time I went in there to mow take a wheelbarrow too and just scatter it about and then the next week you know you do that every week it doesn't really affect my schedule much, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. It's just, you know, if we can get the material there, uh, you know, then you'd basically be feeding it for free. It just kind of makes sense. Beautiful. All right. Thanks for coming, guys. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. Backwards. I need to clarify something. So you, you are going to hire a mechanic, and you are interested in sharing that expense with the school. I, we are interested in sharing the mechanic with the school. I, to me, I would not have you transfer money over from your budget to our budget. Uh, um, I would, my personal opinion would be uh, if we have it, to share it. Yeah. I would want the new mechanic to be yeah. able to do that. Otherwise, we may be put in a position where maybe the deal that we're getting now yeah. on... You're down to light bulbs and oil changes. Well, no. What I'm concerned about is if we take everything away from a garage and then we say to them, oh, but we want you to do our inspections, yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of learning curves. Yeah. I, I think myself, probably the best thing you could do is budget like you have, and you're running a year ahead anyway, so budget like you always have, and it falls apart, uh, step bring do what you've always done. I would just say, though, if it, it comes down to a vote, I disagree with Mr. Paul on whether or not you have to ante up your share of that mechanic, only because I think it's a good way to make sure that all the, you know, if, if all the time is being devoted to a bus, yeah. to the bus fleet, if the bus fleet increases, then what are we getting out of it? I realize that it's all the same, the so tax payers are paying all the same. You'll end up with another employee down there. Exactly. But I, well, I think we need to keep a, a, an eye on that and just yeah. say, you budget, for your, you, you budget for your mechanic fees and then we can see if it's worth it. That's my take on it. Well, my suggestion would be that we do this on like a pilot on your pilot program. Yeah. Um, and See what maybe, works. maybe at the end of the year we might say, no, this is crazy, we need to go right. back to what we're doing. You probably and want to keep the committee together to yeah. meet every month or two and see how it's working. And uh, I mean, the lift doesn't fit, the school bus doesn't fit. There could be issues unforeseen that you have. Absolutely. That. Absolutely. I don't know if you might want to make your, your mechanic job a probationary, one year probationary period. I wouldn't quit a job to go hire one that was a one year that maybe okay. or maybe. And I think that we'll need it for You'll the highway department anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I, just, I just need some clarification to take back to our board as to a cost. So I guess you guys need to decide amongst yourself if you're charging us or not. It is all out of the same pocket. Yeah. It's so just it's like charging you to uh, for plowing your parking lots over there. But I say we go with the 20% that Judy's Offering, huh? Offering. How, the, how do you come up with that figure? I, was, I did was I took the number of hours labor um, on our bills, and it came up to I think it was around 400 hours. And if you take a 40-hour job, 40 hours a week times 52 weeks a year, and then you find out what the percentage of 400 is, it's like roughly 20 percent. And I so. What if you track it for a year with the person? Well, then, I well, think, that's what I, I, think, I, I think that's what we need to do is, is keep an update, you know, track it. Before you start charging. Huh? Before you start charging. Right. Track it for the year to see what's actually being. You see, my thought was it's going to change every year. The yeah. amount of that 20 that's set. That's the bus. 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 That's the bus.
because of that 20. Uh, For whatever reason, they're right. cutting this, cutting this, yeah. cutting this. I mean, it's yeah. just a big budget that's an easy place to cut, yeah. and the school, you know, would surplus them back through because um, it's more difficult to cut the school budgets without seeming anti education, even though you're talking mechanic or whatever. But the idea here is. But we'd be raising that money twice. Exactly. Because you're going to raise it and yep. put it in your budget, and then we're going to raise it in our budget. And so actually, if you really eight. want to save money, you yep. wouldn't charge it. You gotta remember who she's working for right now. She's working for the school right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're already on another budget cycle anyways. You're further ahead than us. Yeah, we're already into yeah. So you've already raised it and have it there. We're just in the right. process of raising. So if well, we just you've already kept our... raised it and have it there too because you've already had yeah. those two positions. It's not a new Correct. position. Well, do you want to keep track of it and then send them a bill, or do you want to help anti up again? Well, you wouldn't want the individual to be incumbent with so much paperwork as far as I did this, I did that. I mean, if it's a simple time cap like they're running now, but um, he would want to be somewhat uh, computer literate with a laptop at the uh, workstation so he can document. Uh, but I, I don't think it has to be documented. Yeah. 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 I think keeping track of the maintenance is, is good, beneficial for any vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Uh, I myself, I, I myself agree <laughs> with what they recommended as a percentage. That's myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if you guys want to vote that down, that's fine. I understand. I, I don't well, know. Well, I wasn't part. thinking at the time, Peter, that we'd be raising it twice. We're actually we'd be raising it twice. So yeah. I really want to say For only spending it once. But it gets spent a second time. It's not like, oh, there's an extra. Well, the school has given back a lot of money several times, but the uh, bottom line budget that could get shuffled and spent just as easy. Yep. It's been raised and appropriated. Good chance it's going to get spent. Where and what? I mean, maybe it's a mechanic or a second or an assistant. Uh, um, Let's just raise it once. Well, that would be coming up. This fall, he works for the school board. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's all our tax I know, but it doesn't sound good. I know it does. Does it sound good? Can't talk any of this again. Let's do the sound better. Or work better if we just let them take it out of their budget and get it back into the, into the general fund? Is that how that would work? I would. Well, well since they're a budget a, a year ahead, anyways, I would still recommend that we both raise the money ourselves for the mm -hmm. first year just in case it doesn't work. You've got the money there to go to a uh, privatized place just in case it's not working and uh, because you could have um, somebody else all of a sudden retire, somebody becomes sick, we're down two guys all of a sudden and who knows what. I would say one other thing though, it gives a false illusion on the other side, on the school side, when they've got a bus fleet uh, that only costs X amount of dollars, which is because there's a hidden fee in the back here yep. that the town is actually paying. Exactly. So, want to swap budgets here? Huh? Want to swap budgets? Nope. We have I like you guys taking the heat for yeah. us. <laughs> we have an <laughs> operation and maintenance budget of the facilities too, and we don't pay for plowing, so does that give exactly. you a false solution? Yeah, it kind of does. Well, we had a recommendation the other day that might take care of that problem, so. <laughs> Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. I, I understand what you guys are talking about, but I'd rather keep records and see how it goes because uh, I, and we, I think we still would want to keep records because you may find out that we're taking a larger percentage mm -hmm. and you may not. That's the concern that. I have. That's why I said a one year pilot program to see if everybody's satisfied. And I don't want to lock anybody in and then have you guys say, wait yep. a minute, you're taking too much of this guy's time. All of a sudden, the make the mechanic may need his own office because every vehicle may have its own three ring binders. So we're we'll talking 20, 25 three ring binders, and um, it can get past it. I'm just, yeah. I don't want to make it make it more difficult than it has to be. But I it's think it's when do you want to start this? I guess would be my next. How long is it going up? So as soon as you find an employee, I would think uh, getting him in used to. Uh, uh, his highway job as far as um, plowing and, and uh, that aspect there, and learning a rule. January 1, yeah. January 1. Yeah. 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 Because my question is, in here it talks about how the person has to be, um, has to have a bus certification. Because that, they're going to do the That's what I mentioned before, but Chuck said it didn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Well, 
So yeah, I guess exactly. by advertising for the yes, person they should have a bus to make yeah. sure they have a bus certification. So or is how do you find a diesel mechanic that has a bus certification? Yes, yeah, so and all the you got a heavy yes. yes. equipment operator. Yes. 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 I know one. That has everything? You know, you know the one? You know I do. I'm not quite positive that uh, don't that don't it, don't the bus know. certification right. part of it, <laughs> but I do <laughs> know. I do know of one that I really would think that we could either get it in a quick way, because but it's Unless like Teddy it said, it's, it's stealing them from another. So are we, are we advertising for that? I guess. I would think the like bus certification would need to be obtained by January. By like January. Yeah, sure. Okay. CEO is required. I don't know how difficulty it is to get, whether it's just exam or it's a you know three month course or what it takes to get. We do with that we find it. Poor Tony and I are sitting there trying to write this job description to go out under mean, this job thing. They have well, a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge about how you to make a test job. Diesel having, mechanic, certified diesel mechanic with CDL. Certified what though? Huh? Are you a certified diesel mechanic or are you specifically certified for Caterpillar or freight? I'd say certified diesel mechanic. I'd leave it as broad and you know, open as you can. Don't pigeonhole yourself and, into one thing. Well, that's what I mean, is that what you said? When they come out of the tech schools, he's a certified correct. diesel mechanic. But then be under the understanding that having the bus certification can be obtained by a certain date because I don't think you're just going to find a no. mechanic out there that just no. has these yellow buses. <laughs> on the oh, website it said that the inspection on, buses. on the website it said that the inspection process to get your inspection um, certification it was Tuesdays at 2 and 6.30 so it sounds like it's a maybe four hour course yes. but that's for a general inspection. Right. Um, and then they have to do a um, field test. There's a lot of good people that can do a great job, and they just can't take tests. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do the I just pass them. Sure. I'm, I'm just curious if you're if you're looking for a certified diesel mechanic. I'm just curious. If you're not planning on rebuilding diesel motors down there, or rebuilding transmissions or uh, drive lines. I mean, so why would you need a certified diesel mechanic to change tires or change an exhaust system or do brake shoes? Because you have the generators uh, and stuff that, that you know might be part of the uh, requirements to take care of the generators for like the sewage pump lines and stuff. Well, are they going to be taking yeah. care of the diesel motors on those, or are they going to be working on the pumps? Or? Well, hopefully the diesel motors. And I think that's, we kind of talked about that with the assistant mechanic in Governor Wentworth that was $15 an hour. To me, the assistant is probably changing the oil, changing the light bulbs. But it's like Paul said in the audience, you know, when Paul said, you know, you probably already got people down there that can handle yeah. that aspect. But to work on the buses, you probably just need that certified mechanic. I think you'd like well, it. I think you'd feel better about the liability. Right. Not only that, I would hope that maybe, maybe they wouldn't repair a transmission. But maybe they should be able to take out the transmission the the whole thing. and sending it out. Knowing so what's wrong with it. Or if they, we had to put a new engine in, they could take that engine out and put a new one in. You know, but a lot of these alternators. A lot of these hmm. costs, from what I understand, on the school buses were jump starting a bus, checking a, a burnt out light bulb on a highway or something. It's simple brand, brand new these yeah. You're throwing two hundred dollars out of a whack to, to go jump start a vehicle and what have you that could be done right there on the premises in the morning before it even leaves and checked. Well, I mean, if you're going to take a motor or transmission out and put another one in, that's a pretty small job. But if you're going to have a certified diesel mechanic, what he's going to bring is his tools and equipment to change the liners and special presses and yeah. reaming tools to, to redo the block height and the deck height and, you know, re replaning, resurfacing the heads and redoing the injectors, uh, you know, fuel injector testing equipment. I mean, you know, that's what certified diesel mechanics mm -hmm. are going to have. I mean, that, it's, it's that level of detail. But, you know, I mean, you know, to change a, a drive axle or, you know, rear end or brake shoes or an entire motor or, you know, to take one unit off and put it back on, you know, I mean, it, it, it may be someone's overqualified if you're looking for an actual certified yeah, diesel mechanic right. because, yeah. you know, that's pretty yeah. high tech and that's a pretty specified field, you know, and I mean, you know, you might not find somebody that 
that's going to be the equipment operator, snowplow driver, uh, that want the whole to thing. Be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. If he's a certified diesel, but he's, he's not going to want to. He's not going to want to. Yeah, he's going to so, school. He's going to school. He's going to school. He's going to be working at a dealership, probably, probably making a hundred grand a year. So, yeah. Jerry, I throw this question at you. We've got all these, we've got all these dump trucks out the highway department that are, that are scheduled to go offline at any moment. Yeah. Uh, having a diesel mechanic there might extend the life of those vehicles and in turn save the town hundreds of thousands of dollars replacing those vehicles. Is but what he's a, trying to say is that you would need a, you would need a, a, a technician that come out of college for a four year degree. Well, you may, you may want them if you're going to have them working on backhoes and loaders and You've got, because they can yeah. take care of the landfill equipment as well. Exactly. You've got loaders, backhoes, graders. I think diesel mechanic, just like a waste management diesel mechanic, can handle that or a, a huge donor. I don't think they're a technician. I, you know, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you find this like a single governmental network is you have the head mechanic who's probably diesel certified, and then you have people working under him, like we just talked about. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. the question that you have, Peter, though, is the thing is you got trucks that are 10 or 15 years old, and now they're 10 or 15 years old, and they're spent, and you're saying, how can we get these to last? 20 years, but you, you can't, it's, it's not practical to do that. What you have to do is when, when those come from the factory and they're brand new, that's when you lay out your plan as to how long you're going to keep them. Understood. Because, because, you know what I mean, because you have to, you know, once they're worn out, it, I know trying to breathe life into some of these old trucks is going to be difficult, but what I'm saying is that if, if the body is good on it, and like you just said, the head just needs to be planed or the engine needs to be rebuilt, and if you've got somebody there that can save you the expense of replacing the truck because the engine's gone, or even replacing the engine. Replacing the engine, that's it. You know, and you can extend the truck another five years, maybe you've saved the town some money. I, I don't know. You know more about mechanics than I do, Jerry. Right, no, I understand, I understand that one, but I mean, the they are going to come in to, to change the whole engine or change the whole transmission if you're taking one piece out and put one back in. You're not necessarily getting into the internal workings of the engine, you know, and setting up the injectors or setting up the rack. You know, you're not getting in and adjusting the jake brakes and all these other, you know, more technical side of things. Just that, that a certified, you know, a highly certified diesel mechanic would, would actually, that, that's what you're paying for, but you may not be using somebody that has all those credentials. That's it. That's all I'm No, and you, like I said, you, you have more experience in that category than I But just just my friend. No, it's a good one. So maybe we we'll want to check with the guys that are already there, who, who can take care of what, and maybe we don't, wouldn't have to go down that road just yet. Well, I just asked Rusty on his way out the door, the, the gentleman that we're working at replacing his talents, if he would help oversee looking at that position. Because like, the, like was stated, someone down there might be able to do most of what we're looking for yeah. without going out and hiring a certified diesel mechanic. Yeah. Well, we can certainly well, I think if we do need a certified diesel mechanic in the future, then that's what we'll, we'll worry about that when it comes. Right now, we go for a, 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 a qualified diesel mechanic. A chief maintenance engineer with diesel mechanic background. That sounds, sounds good. good. And a CDL. And it's, it has a CDL. And able to operate equipment. And, we'll have, and the, 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 the uh, school bus certification. By, yes, right, by January 1st, right. if that's needed. Okay. I mean, you might want to What's the intent of the town being including in that? Highway? Just the highway. Don't Just the highway, not, not the place of highway? Well, we're not going to limit it to that. No, but I wouldn't say we should limit it. time and availability yeah. and uh, the transfer station you could bring in. Exactly. I, I wouldn't want to limit anything at this point. What, what, so we say we'll take any, it anything in the town? Like, because, I mean, you might get to a point where one, one of those two guys, you might be using him full time just as a mechanic. Right. Right. If he's going to take care of the, the, the transfer station and Absolutely. police and school. And, and, but uh, there's things we have to take into consideration like with what Todd had mentioned. Um, oh, right. oh, no, so it's starting off slow at this point in my view. Well, and, no, and, I was just, you know, yeah. like we were talking about, having the committee still meet Absolutely. from time to time and going forward from here, what are we planning on as far as the town goes? Yeah. Is it just going to be highway and school, or could it be possibly transfer, maybe some of the police? I think you cross that road when you get there. I, yeah. I would think you'd include the transfer station, and I would think you'd include your generators. 
Yeah, absolutely. As much as possible. Yeah. And then let the police department kind of feel it out. Yeah, anybody can work their way into it. That's you know. Right, well, I just want to, you know, just so we know when we meet again and yeah. whatever, and just that, you know, it might it might be eating up more of that of one individual's time than. You were originally, that's what you originally That was my concern, like what I said with the school buses, Steve. You know, if it turns into more of a fleet or as the buses get older, more right. time's going to have to be dedicated to it. So we're all going to have to feel this out. And right, just so everyone knows that because you just set, you just hired two, two guys. Yep. But you might use up more of one of those positions just on the mechanic end of it. Yeah. And you were planning on. Yeah. The intent of, I mean, Rusty was a mechanic down there. But was able to go out and do the things which, because the mechanic, he didn't meet his position, didn't call for him to be in that shop all the time. Because right. some days there's not going to be nothing broken, so he, he needs to be able to go. Yeah. He, needs oh, to be, he needs to be versatile on oh, all absolutely. aspects. Of no, no, I just want to make sure everyone was clear that you may not, you know, that people were aware that maybe one of those two positions now might be utilized more on the mechanic side of it. Then someone maybe thought maybe they were going to get one and a half yeah. say of those out on the highway to Bob. Yeah. That's all. Well, we're going to limit it so we can charge you guys 50% next year. <laughs> so the one year pilot program will be the hardest that the vote I heard, or I didn't hear the vote, so I guess that's what I'm looking for. I just need to tell the board what it's going to cost. I, I heard no jobs, I don't want to go. I'm glad you were. You just giggled when I said 50%, you heard that too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Fred, you got a comment? 
And my biggest concern, and I can see that it could be an issue with that maintenance person being a floater for plowing roads, would be the situation where he's out plowing, you have a half a day school, and maybe one of the buses broke down or needed to be finished to be repaired. Yeah, so we, um, we, we discussed that. Uh, Fred, yeah. and we had discussed that on several levels, and, and the, the contentious is, first of all, we're not going to give up on the facilities that already maintain the vehicles. Yeah. Um, we're not going to break ties with them, so they would always be, you know, able to go to that source. Yeah. The other thing is, a lot of times school is called off when there's a snowstorm, so that person, if he's out plowing, uh, chances are the bus is not running anyway because the school's been, you know, sure. a lot of times. Not every time. We also have spare buses. So. Yeah. yeah. So there, there is, it was thought brought into that, Frank, just to let you know. We, yeah, I just could see that that could be a concern issue. Absolutely. And I get one, one last point was, uh, you know, I, I really don't like to see us get into a position where if we're going to hire, um, I'd like to see if, personally, myself as a taxpayer, if we're going to look at uh, hiring somebody, at least someone that's at least 10 or 15 years from retirement. Because when we get to the point where we have an aging crew, mm -hmm. you're going to be in the same situation where you were if you have half your crew retired. And, uh, and I think you should have a mix of, of, of people that are experienced and stuff, but are willing to stay for long haul. Like long well, I think there's a federal law out there that restricts us from having Well, I know age that, discrimination, yeah. but, you know, I'm just saying, I'd say being almost 60, I take exception to the president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, I'm, just looking, I'm just looking as a taxpayer, you're, I, you're, I, I, you're, you're able to see your, your crew cut in half every three years. And, 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 and it's telling the judge that theory that doesn't work. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I agree with you, Brad. I, would, yeah, I agree with you. All right, so we've gone past public uh, comment and unfinished business since there isn't any new business. Safe routes to school. Uh, we've been awarded $4,846 in a grant for the project. Uh, you guys got the agreement? Yep. This is for the uh, startup grant. How are we meeting for? Just to do uh, the committee the meeting on and off for. Helmets, bike helmets, um, just educating the kids to walk into school safely, that they should walk to school, that it's good for them to walk to school. It's all the, the startup uh, funds to hopefully in the future think about some sidewalks. 100%? No. This is 100% no. funded through the. Yeah. But my only issue with that is, is uh, it's, it's a great idea and I love the idea of the safety for the children of the town. Um, but when you do get a sidewalk, Who's going to buy the bobcat to plow it off? Well, That's this is why sorry. we have not moved any further than this. This is the first step. We've, the committee has talked about the next step grant process. We've done a travel plan through Stratton Regional Planning. They've done all the, the work, basically, for but they, that. The, doesn't that grant tell you that you that you that the town has to take the responsibility? If you this build is, it, you must this maintain is just, This is just a startup grant just for the helmets, the, um, it's just an educational mm -hmm. grant. It's not to do sidewalks. The, this was is not to build any sidewalks. Yeah, there were engineered plans for on the sidewalks and they're not elevated. It's just paving the road a little wider with a white strip. Up. And believe me, I'm, I'm fond, I love yeah. the idea of, of paying attention to it, but I'm thinking okay. the, the next step, if we ever decide to go to the next step, that isn't the biggest concern. Who pays for all that? Who maintains it? Um, the, I went to a class that talked about you get to do easements because it depends on the width of the road. Exactly. Yeah, taking um, people's front taking lines. Taking people's front So the, the committee has pretty much right now decided to put all that on hold. This startup grant, which was up to $5,000, is strictly just for helmets, crosswalks, um, educating kids on safety. Does that, does that tie us in 
So it's not ties into anything. 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 We do not have to go any further. We can just do this. And no money pay back. It's just, no money it's just the government just comes out of the bill and hands to, us down some money. I have to <laughs> meet with them and I have to give them an update every time we spend money. Every time we do what we say we're going to do per this grant, I have to give them an update. And when the money's done, the money's done, and then that's it. I'll make a motion to accept the grant. $1,846. Second. Any more discussion? Or few? All in favor? Aye. 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 Three. Okay, there's three spots on here that has um, signature. Don't put a date in it because you ask me not to put it on the date. Yeah. Well, you can jump in on the non public in a couple of minutes. Uh, next is the capital reserve expenditure and the technology fund, nine hundred thirty dollars and sixty-two cents. Motion made. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, just Lewis, we got a tax quiet property. Interesting purchase. Uh, bought a piece of property. Do we know the? Is it vacant land? Forget it's 
eight thirty or whatever on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. and now you're in a twenty zone, so you need flash in the house. Get on that twenty zone and better that one on. Yeah, we all are. Public comment, Jerry. Yeah, I did have a question about that. That school golf sign headed down toward the where you cross over Grand River there, and uh, it, it's kind of occurred to me for a while that there's a path that comes down from the school and crosses the road right there by the Branch River mm -hmm. uh, bridge, but. You know, it's, it's really the only place where the school more or less intersects directly with that road, and, and that path comes out just beyond where the school uh, school zone ends. I, I just, I just struck me as kind of odd that that, yeah. that school zone wouldn't extend to include that that path because I mean, you know, basically that's where a lot of students do come out of the school and come down across there and then and cross right there uh, by we Rider. Like back thing is right there right by Rider, 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 right by the bridge because I mean it's only a matter of I don't know 50 or 100 feet beyond the end of the school zone but it but it seems odd that the that the place where the school really intersects with the road most directly is is actually beyond the you know before you get into the school zone on one end and then it's not the city it's the it's the Oh, I understand that, but I mean, as far as, as, far as it being on that stretch of Route 109, where the oh, school zone yeah. stretches on Route 109, that it doesn't, it doesn't extend long enough to cross where the students actually come from the school. Most of the time, but I think it's been discouraged to use. To, to not use that. To not use that, because it is, I think it was. Yeah, because it's always been there, Jerry, because I remember as a kid, yeah. it was so, always, it's always been used, and it still is today, you right. know, it's, Discouraged not I do agree with Jerry that that is a major point where all the kids come out of, but the one thing that is really needed in that area is a bridge widening because uh, yeah. you get the kids walking on an inside rail right there, you've got about a six inch zone between the white line and the metal. That's I mean, right. that's, that's, that's a, a dangerous right? That's a dangerous <laughs> Yeah, but bridges, I mean, we don't even, you know how it is to get bridge work that they started working on that one in like 20 years too late. It'd be nice if they could just expand the the uh, guide rails out and extend like a little walkway across it, you know, just kind of make it, not, doesn't have to be paid or anything, but it just welded some metal out there and made a nice metal walkway around that. It'd be great if nobody wants to touch a bridge. We're going to have a walk to school day, and that will be one thing not part of this plan, but part of the project. Uh, the kids will get, bus kids will get dropped off at the Parks and Rec building and at the Catholic Church, and they'll be walking to school from there mm -hmm. to encourage them to walk to school. Um, and that was scheduled for October 3rd, but we changed it because of our kneecap testing that week. We're going to do it October 15th. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to try to encourage in the future, wasn't it, as parents to pick up the kids at these two locations? Right, have those two as drop-off spots. And Fred said that him and the police chief yeah, manager in Burroughs Ave, and they're, did they hang it already? Yeah, they were going to put a walking lane um, line down Burroughs Ave because the road was wide enough for car travel and... <coughs> what does that do for the town's liability? Once you paint it, you got to paint it all the time. I, I'm just curious what, you know, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know. Right, it's no it. different than, did have the Olympic State Road. I was going to say, it's no different than uh, the main road through here has lines in it. Yeah, but I mean, if you're telling people where they have to walk and something happens, I mean, you know, if, if there's no paint, that is at your own risk. Once you once you designate a spot and something happens, uh, you're assuming some responsibility. I would assume. I don't know. You know, like I said, I don't know what the law is, but I'm just asking that. Oh, we're just defining the road. Yeah. <laughs> just. I think we're gonna look into that. It's already done. Yeah. All right, no more public comment. Uh, please have reports. Uh, let's see, I just got an email to me. National Heritage Commission. Thank you very much. Take care, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Wakefield Heritage Commission has voted unanimously to oppose any commercial sign message board on a town hall property. They hope another location will be found appropriate. Example, turntable park. 
Uh, they are continuing to work on the interior of the Heritage Center. The Union Station Museum will be closing for the season on Columbus Day holiday meetings. I, uh, I tried reading that sign by Turntable Park when somebody was driving the other day at a reasonable speed. I couldn't even see it. So. I think the, uh, the difference would be is if we uh, turn that sign 90 degrees mm -hmm. and maybe build a little island out there to rent your house in. I'll start the pool for where I want somebody runs it right over to if you put it right out in the parking lot. Yeah, well, no, I, well, listen to the cloud guys yeah. pitch about it too. Yeah, oh, I understand. I'm so sorry. I that's how you want that red. red. That, that's how that works. Exactly. Why can't you just make it bigger and wider? Just the way it is. Just make it a little bigger. I mean, it's old and, and they're going to put a new one up. Put something up there that's worth looking at. Because it's definitely something that I, if we're going to put a nice sign out there and they're willing to put one out there, then that one's due for repairs by all means. Sorry, you were on a roll, Peter. <laughs> it wasn't on a roll. Yeah. <laughs> um, and let's see, the Conservation Commission, last time I was at the meeting, um, it's pretty much just reviewing the natural resource inventory and, and getting that ball rolling with getting that part of there master plan done. Um, also the conservation easement just dealing with the you know delays here and there. And uh, I think that's about it for my liaison reports. And the only thing that I got is the rec department is finalized their golf tournament which is happening shortly and uh, they announced that the uh, planning board had all got canceled so I did uh, I actually had a nice week without anything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's just beginning. Budget season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a uh, budget meeting last night. Uh, luckily, we kind of looked at the budget a month or two ago, and the spikes were still there. Uh, one of the spikes, uh, uniforms, highway department, uh, still was way up over there. So, um, Teresa's looking into a lot of the old expenditures, just making sure that and also sending those budgets out, the expenditures, to the department heads via email once a month. Just, uh, they usually come in and ask, but let's just make sure they all get sent to it, and then we've got a good grasp. Um, it could go the opposite way as far as them being informed that they're overspending. They could then they realize they've still got plenty of money in there. Um, as we move on in the next couple of months, it's just going to tighter and tighter and tighter. Watch that as we move on. Uh, Selectman's letter of appreciation. Actually, Kevin, one thing I want to mention the food pantry. It's not my liaison. Yeah. I was down there the other day. They've done a fantastic job. I haven't seen it since it's erected. Uh, they're doing an excellent job. And I talked to uh, Fred this evening about the water line, at least running it across the driveway that's anticipated to be put in. So. I'll add to that is uh, I did get an email asking for, um, they're asking. If people want to uh, bid a little bit on some of the interior stuff, they, they are taking some um, some bids for it, but they you know they I'm sure they're looking for more donation, uh, maybe some new contractors in town to uh, uh, maybe volunteer for a little more. Participate, yeah. yeah. And, uh, They've done a great job down there. Yeah, yeah. The only thing was with that water line. <clears throat> we, we look at that. You can't run that on a straight shot from their building to the town building. Uh, first of all, the state has property in between. Um, second of all, you'd be also running right across the, the town's leach field down there. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea was to just dead end it on the other side of the driveway and revisit it and look at it in the future so we may be able to run the line down their driveway to the parking area and then across the parking area. There for a second, you the state has property between the main <coughs> three and the highway line. Let me look, let me just yeah. Um, Right here, about three, right? 
Yes, she has that. Yeah. See right here? The corner of that. Here's where the food pantry is. If you were going to run that line, oh, I see. you see yeah. you're running it right across yeah. there. Yeah. It's a little triangular piece where it comes yeah. in. Yeah. And, uh, and so yeah. instead we'll just run it down the driveway here and out across the parking. Yeah. Make the most sense. You want it to ask for an easement. You won't be conflicting with the, the town's leach field, which is not known the exact location. Slackman's letter of appreciation. Charlie, Peter, I have one, but Charlie has one as well. Yeah, and I think they're both very ethical. Um, I'll let Charlie go with his and I'll bring mine in the next time. Yeah. I think Deb Wilson would be a good one. Yep. So okay. she does a great job for them. Yeah. Yeah. Administrator's update. Yeah. Oh, um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't I the um, <laughs> the bracket <laughs> road project <laughs> on, um, for uh, the AWA project, bracket road, and all that stuff is. Um, hopefully it's going to start happening October 2nd and we are still collecting some drainage easements but we have one so far. So I have one drainage easement from the Tinkham Revocable Trust that uh, Mr. Tinkham assigned and I know the rights of signature so we just need the board to sign so we can send it up to the registry that I recorded. I have the other ones coming in by next week. Census of the board. I'm oh, good. I was setting the budget calendar to the board to meet with all the department heads. And I was just confirming. Kelly works Tuesday nights. Kelly works Thursday nights. <laughs> okay. And we're here on Wednesday. And we're here on opposite Wednesday. We can go there during the workshops. What is your swap? Meeting with the department has to go over the budget. You're going to meet with the department has to go over the budget. Last year you took four nights. So, um, okay, we just pick one weekend day and do, do all of them. Well, it is an option to do a Saturday if you. Well, then, you, right if you meet with the department, if you're going to have them in on a Saturday, they won't tell them or obviously. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. 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 That wouldn't be bad as just being part of the team. That's just <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, I will tell you that if you decide to do next, next Wednesday, if I look at my list from last year, all of those budgets, I pretty much have except for one, and I can get that from them before then. I like. Uh, so I like one of the prior selectmen's idea of uh, it's the same number of la as last year versus going line by line by line. Use the same budget as last year, except for uh, increases in salary and insurances and stuff. Um, With the, all the department? Yep. Yeah. One of the concerns I have came about the budget. Because we're going line by line, means everybody. No, no. I, I just want to make sure that we stop. We start fixing up the roads and, yeah. and stuff. I mean, I don't. I don't, want us, to be yeah. I don't want to see us limiting a department saying, "Listen, come in one percent under, come in at dead even," because we've been letting things go by the wayside. We can't keep doing it. We've yeah. got to pay sooner or later. Yeah. Might as well. The project will be well, all, the, all the departments have come in basically with all their budgets. I'm waiting for three more budgets. Um, I can see a dollar <coughs> increase in the tax rates coming. Yeah, but it, it's either that or you have to pay later. I mean, right? yeah. if you have to rebuild everything that you've already So, would you like me to start next Wednesday? I guess that's one of my questions. <coughs> that's what I said. I can have a workshop day? Isn't that the first Wednesday? I'm just trying to skip over Wednesday to be honest with you. Oh, we'll get Charlie going. The only problem is, I can't skip over Wednesday. The only problem with it is that you run into the following week and you get a holiday. Get it, get it, get it, come on. And the 22nd. 
15th was a Monday. It's a Monday. And, and the 17th is a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. And then the following 22nd. In order for me to have everything ready for the budget committee, yep. which starts their first meeting on November 3rd. Because we got to have the packets to that one last week. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can be simple. Wednesday the third. So we'll start Wednesday the third. And you're looking at Monday the fifteenth. Yeah. And the sixteenth? Seventeenth, Wednesday the seventeenth. That's not a regular yep. scheduled meeting. No. Yep. And then Monday the twenty second. I'll send it all out to you guys. That's what I'm gonna hope for. Yeah, but we do time to retire. Time to I'm starting we're starting at six thirty. We'll do like we did last year. They ran until about eight thirty, nine o'clock. So instead of any afternoon session, we're just talking on those off Wednesdays. No, yeah, we're not going to do. Oh, oh, oh instead of. Oh, well. Now you got one of them. Well, do you want to start them early? We never have been able to because of work schedules, but on those off Wednesdays, do you want to start them early? Here we go again. Well, that's up to you guys. Well, that's what we're asking. Or would you rather October third, the third and the seventeenth? If it was later in the season, I'd, I'd go right for it. But right now, I'm not so like extreme right. busy. Well, you, know, you want to do six o'clock? Oh, I, I, I well, I, I'm willing to work with. Six better. I mean, I'm, I'm getting used to Wednesdays as Wednesdays. So whether it's six, three, four, or whatever, let's just get it done. Whatever you really want to do. Not at all. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. Yeah, say four o'clock. On Wednesday? Four o'clock on the third and four o'clock on the seventeenth. What does that feel? And I just expressed my thought on that. It wasn't good. <laughs> so it's just not me then, no? Huh? <laughs> and then on the fifteenth and the twenty second, which are Mondays, we'll keep the six o'clock. I like six o'clock numbers. That I mean that I'm here usually an hour early anyway, just so I can go over things and myself and so I mean whatever whatever works for everybody. I just want to make sure that I just want to be committed. You should be. No, I want I want <laughs> to be committed so that I can commit my time. That would bring the guys to the way <laughs> I mean, it's just in the Google calendar, so it doesn't matter to me. If you start switching around, you're going to get some that will say, well, why couldn't I buy that at 4 o'clock? Yeah. I would like 4 o'clock. That's my only thing. I might run into that. So if you say, say 6 o'clock across the board. Across the board. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's just repeat that. Yeah, it's just for Yeah, because you're going to have to go out of here and get out of here. Wednesday's the first one. Yeah, Wednesday, next Wednesday, Sorry. 6 o'clock. Got it.
on the other rules. Are you still accepting that? I don't think we're going to be. I think we're going to hire two people to do it, right? Yep. Is that something that we're going to do with? Yep. I mean, I'm not against that. I don't know. Oh, we're not going to pay twice. That's what I'm saying. No. Yeah. Tom, thank you for his time and effort. And